If you've been to the supermarket lately, you've probably noticed the price of meat is going up and fast. But while the price you pay has never been higher, many American cattle ranchers say they're struggling. We sent Lisa Fletcher to Oklahoma to find out why. When it comes time to feed this prized Angus herd, a simple tap of the truck horn gets an immediate response. But feeding the cattle is perhaps the only easy part of the business for John Pfeiffer, who's been farming here in central Oklahoma since 1985. His family has been in the state for generations. My granddad talks about uh, the, when he went through the 30s, and they were actually getting paid $10 a head for the cows to kill them because there wasn't any market for them. Things are better than they were for John's granddad, but much in his business depends on factors ranchers can't control, like the price of feed or how much they can sell their animals for. It's always been difficult for farmers to make a living. They've always talked about the fact that they're asset rich and cash poor. And right now, there's a strange contradiction in the beef business. While prices at the supermarket keep rising, many of those who raise the cattle aren't seeing higher profits. Are you getting more money for your cattle? No, we're not. For more than a decade, retail prices of beef have been steadily rising, going from $6.81 to $12.28 per pound for sirloin steak between 2011 and now. Over the same time, the price for live cattle has stayed flat, between $120 and $160 per hundred weight. We can adjust to the situation. Fred Stokes is also a cattleman. After a 20-year military career, he returned to his family farm in Mississippi. When we caught up with him this summer, he was in Washington, D.C. with fellow farmers, discussing what's wrong with the cattle business and meeting members of Congress. What are family farmers up against right now? Extinction, probably. Who's getting all the money? Uh, the, right now, the beef packer. They're totally ripping people off. Stokes helped found a farmers group called the Organization for Competitive Markets. It says the U.S. beef industry has become too concentrated with just four meat packing companies controlling more than 80 percent of the market. There's no question that they have the leverage to, to exact whatever they want, whatever portion they want from the beef dollar. Between them and, and, and the uh, retailer, uh, they, they take so much off the plate that there's simply not enough on average for, for the producer to get by. The price livestock producers receive plummeted while consumer prices surged. And, and it's not just smaller ranchers like sounding the alarm. The vice president of the U.S. Cattlemen's Association recently said this at a meeting of the Senate Agriculture Committee. But since 2015, corporate packers' gross margin has ballooned from an average of $100 to $200 a head to well over $1,000 a head. Packers have enjoyed unbelievable profits, harvesting around 120,000 head per day, while cattle producers go out of business and consumers pay double or even triple at the meat counter. Of the four big meat packing companies, two are Brazilian controlled. A trade group that represents them has accused the government of scapegoating them, saying low prices for cattle ranchers are a result of market forces, with more animals than existing production plants can handle, creating a buyer's market for live cattle. For consumers, it all means higher prices now and in the future. And because of loopholes in labeling rules, it isn't even clear where the beef is coming from. Fun to have USDA come yesterday. And, um... Mike Eby is a seventh generation dairy farmer and cattle rancher from Pennsylvania. Explain to sure. people who don't know, why is country of origin labeling so important to a, an American farmer? Here you have beef that is brought in from other countries, uh, maybe blended with the American beef, uh, repackaged once it gets here, and they can then slap a made in the USA on it because it's, you know, in a styrofoam container, <laughs> container that is, uh, it's made in the USA. So to the consumer that's purchasing, they just assume that it, it is in the U.S. and there is no differentiation between uh, beef that is brought in from other countries such as Brazil. Except for the price. Often making foreign beef because it costs less, the choice of Americans who think they're supporting U.S. farmers because there's no requirement to tell consumers the true country of origin. Come on. Farmers like John say they are holding on as best they can, 
watching their profits disappear and quite possibly their family farms along with them. And so what is the Biden administration saying about this? Well, they've accused the four major meatpacking companies of, quote, pandemic profiteering for near record profits. Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says it's looking at ways of addressing the problem. Some members of Congress are looking toward legislation for more price transparency. Even the Department of Justice is looking into this. And meanwhile, there are some cattle ranchers that are trying to raise money to start their own processing plants. And meantime, the prices keep going, keep going up. up. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm.